everyone and welcome to this fly tying video. Today we're going to tie the Sonker Bugger. This one is a jig version of this fly. So it's really good when you want to fish them really close to the to the bottom because once you've done tying the fly and once you're fishing it, you will have it riding upside down. So the hook point will never snag into anything on the bottom. So here in the vise I have a jig hook, this one is the Hanak H400BL This one is a size 12, this is the Jig Classic, they also have one with an inward spent point This one has this straight one The bead is a 3.3mm tungsten bead, this one is in the color copper This one is slotted so it can go down right to the eye But as you see now it's really loose and it can easily come undone and if you start tying right now you would have to put a lot of thread wraps right here behind the bead to make it secure so what I'll do is I'll take some lead free wire this one is the point oh fifteen and I'm going to start to put down just a little bit of wire so a few turns and then you want to break off this end really close and now if you were to try to push this up inside the bead it would just stop right here and you wouldn't have any wire inside the bead so to make this fly even more secure what you can do is you take your flat nose pliers and I'm just going to squeeze a few millimeters so it becomes just a little bit more narrow and then a drop of glue and now we take the bead and as we've done just a little flatter spot you will be able to push this up inside the bead so now it's really secure the bead is holding the wire and the wire is holding the bead so now we can break or tear the other end off and to secure this a little bit more I'm going to add just a thin coat of glue all over to start this I'm going to grab my uni 6 sort in white and this thread I'm using mostly just to build up some bulk on my flies and just to secure like wires or just to build up the underbody you could also use even thicker thread for this but I like to use my 6 sort as I'm mostly tying flies size 12 and down so the 6 sort is really good when you want to build up just the right amount of bulk on these little smaller flies so here what I've done is I've just started to put down a few layer of thread and what's going to happen quite naturally is that you will have a nice taper going from the bead down to the back of the hook and this is mostly due to the wire that we put in but if you can help this with a few turns of thread it's only good so now we've secured the wire, the bead and we have this first layer of thread and on this we're going to build or tie the whole fly so this you want to be really secure so what I will do here is to do a free turn whip finish, pull tight and cut off. Now I'm going to take a much thinner thread and this one is the Nano Silk from Samplefly, 80 knot in beige. And here depending on the color of the fly you want to make, you can choose any color you want just to match the body. This thread is so thin so you barely won't even see it. So you could choose almost any color and it would quite well match the body. This fly is a variant of the classic woolly bugger and as most of you or all of you know the woolly bugger is a fly that has a marabou tail and then some hackle and can be tied with either dubbing or chenille. Here I'm going to take away most of these materials but the overall shape should remain quite the same 
So the first material I'm going to substitute is instead of a marabou tail, I'm going to do a tail out of a sunker strip, and hence the name of the fly is instead of woolly bugger, it's the sunker bugger. So here I have a rabbit strip or a sunker strip. This one is in a color called sand. At the bottom, it's quite gray brownish and the tips of these hairs are a more golden brown color so what I do is I separate a little bunch or clump of hair and then once you have this taken out you can come in with your scissors and cut off the skin and this way these hairs will stay in place so you don't have to worry about that and this one has a lot of guard hairs so for this fly I'm going to take away most of them it will give it just a little bit more natural movement to the fly and also make for a little better looking one and then here you can choose how long you want your tail what I like to do is to have it about the length of the hook or slightly longer this will then pulsate in the water and move really well and as this fly is tied on a jig hook it will have this nice jigging motion as well so when you fish the fly it's going to have this part that is the heaviest so this the head is going to be the one leading the rest of the fly so once you pull it, it will go up and then when you let it go or make it up the fly is then going to sink quite rapidly with the head first and this is going to make this tail move really well it's exactly the same as for a normal jig as you would when you spin fish or fish for perch or something like that so I think this fly could also be a quite good perch fly. I think I would try this out this summer and if I do I will make sure to tell you how it went. So I'm so really looking forward to try this fly on many species. Last year I fished a variant of this fly in, in a black color and went really well so this year I'm really excited to try it in a lot of new colors and maybe in some new materials. The next thing I'm going to tie in is the rib and this is some soft wire from Uni. This one is the in size small and copper. The small size works really well for sizes 12, 14 and so, so this is usually what I use but you could go a little bigger if you want to have a little more segmentation or just have your flight a little bit more heavy. So here what I do is I usually push the wire up inside the bead and this way it will stay in place and then because these wires when you have a little thicker body like this have a tendency just to want to move around when you start tying with them so pushing it up inside the bead is a really neat trick just to make this little problem disappear so take this down to where we tied in the tail and for now we're going to leave this here and for the body as for the classic woolly bugger you could use a lot of different materials you could go with some chenille if you like that you could go with some dubbing or maybe some wool and for this one i'm going to go with a dubbing mix that i call trout mix and it is this nice brown orange color where it has the base is brown dubbing, a lot of different different sorts of dubbing and um, as a highlight it has both some SLF in a clear color and also some SLF with this synthetic living fiber. It is this synthetic um, dubbing that has, they have a little longer and quite straight fibers, works really well for any dubbing you want to have a little highlight in so here I've put in some orange and it really 
makes for a nice dubbing and I think it looks really like a little brown trout and in my rivers up in the north of Sweden we have a lot of small brown trout in the summer so this I think would be one of the main targets of either bigger brown trout or maybe even perch and mostly grayling. So here I've taken just a little bit of dubbing and as and as usual you could do this in one go if you wouldn't have a camera just a few centimeters from the fly. So now I'm going to grab it or put on just a little bit more of this same dubbing. And what you want here is to make a slightly tapered body and you don't have to pack the dubbing on too much as we're going to brush this out with our hackle that we will add later. So it's better to have a little bit of loose dubbing that you can then brush out. It makes for a neater fly and also combines all the elements together. So here I'm going to go with just a little bit more dubbing and as I have the bead here uh, a neat thing to do is to have the dubbing going from the back up to the width of the bead. For the hackle I'm going to go with some Whiting's dry fly hackle. This one is from a saddle. It's this brown color and on the other side it's more like sand or the same color as the tail. So this one is really neat. It has this shifting color if you look from at it from the front or from the back. And here I've taken a feather with the right length on the fibers and these should be just a little bit past the hook cape. I've stripped off a few fibers from the bottom and what I'll do here is to tie this in I'm going to come in at almost 90 degrees and I'm going to tie this in on my side or at the bottom and to tie this in at a 90 degree angle I'm going to do some cross wraps so in front and the back and this will really tie this in and have it stand out 90 degrees from the hook shank and then we can come in and cut the stem off a few more turns just to tidy up and then what I'll do is to do one full turn right behind the bead and then we're going to start winding this down in open turns the whole length of the body so this should be enough and once you reach the wire we can then cross the wire over the hackle and this will effectively tie this down and then as we're going to go up with the wire through the hackle this will also counter wrap this hackle and really make sure it doesn't come undone once you reach the thread or the bead we can then tie down this wire and here I really like to have this nano silk as it's so thin each turn you make will sink down right behind the bead and you won't barely see it then we can helicopter the wire off and the last thing to do is to take our web finish pull back all fibers or all little hackle fibers and three turn whip finish pull tight then cut off the thread and for now this fly doesn't look like much but once you start brushing out the dubbing or blending the dubbing with the hackle it's going to make this really stiff hackle into a little bit more like a soft hackle type and the fibers will just start to lean a little bit towards the back but what I think is one of the key elements to the success of this fly is that it has 
these stiffer hackle fibers instead of a softer one. So there we have the Sunker Bugger in this jig variant. If you have any suggestions of fly that I could tie next, just leave them in the comment section below. So thanks so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time and happy time!